Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are here shivering on the mountain tops of the Horfrost Reach at dawn because we are training to become expert longsword users. And everybody's here for the same purpose. We want to learn how to maximize our usage of our weapon, the moves, what skills are behind the moves, what sequence and orders to do things and um, you know I've just had a few requests to say you know what's the best way to build your meter what's the best way to set up a foresight slash and let's go ahead and train everybody to do all these things this game is amazing it's absolutely gorgeous and when you get full control of your weapon um, the immersion factor and the feel of becoming one with your weapon is unlike any in just about any other game I've ever played really once you get the fluidity down, this weapon becomes so amazing, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn how to use this weapon to its utmost ability. Here we go, guys. Hey guys, we're going to start off this video by just going over some of the Longsword's best moves that have um, special attributes to them that you really want to know. And a lot of these attributes are based on either counter hits or countering roars or something like that. That's just going to be a little difficult to show uh, in the actual training room because nothing fights back. Uh, and the majority of this video is going to be in the training vi uh, room, but I want to start it off with a few clips that show uh, all the moves moves that you really want to know and the qualities of those moves that you want to be able to set up to to master this weapon. Uh, this weapon gets to a point where um, you can cancel your counter attack style into kind of these option selects so you can decide what you want to do next instead of just randomly throwing out things and this will help you become in control of this weapon and truly master it and have it do exactly what you want it to do in most any given situation. All right, here's your bread and butter foresight slash. It's a counter hit, absorbs damage. This follow-up becomes available that builds your meter instantly. Let's watch it a couple of times in slow-mo again just to get a clear understanding. You have to do some attack to get it started because it's not an attack you can just do raw. So I'm going to do this regular triangle. When he lands, foresight slash the electricity. That's its normal hit. That's the follow-up hit. Meter built to max. And uh, as a longsword main, you're going to always be going into special sheet to see what else you can do after that. I just did that to build some meter. One last time, the move of all moves for us longsword players. I like how I actually hit him with my triangle attack. I wasn't meaning to do that, but I'll take it. Do it. Absorb the damage. Follow-up hit. And that's the Foresight Slash. Sorry I can't show it in the training room, but I just wanted to make sure people understood what the move is and what it does and how awesome it is. Just wanted to show that with certain moves like your Foresight Slash and your Special Sheath Triangle Attack, um, you can actually go through roars with these attacks and get the benefits of those conditions of your moves. See? It'll go shink go right through that roar and same thing with the foresight slash and you do get the follow-up so you can get the meter gain with that as well let's just look at it slow-mo one more time this doesn't negate damage it's not invulnerable but it does let you power through things that would normally have uh, stopped you or knocked you over like a even physical attacks the um, special sheath triangle special ability other than building meter is to plow through pretty much any attack um, but you know for example if this uh, he did an attack that was going to inflict bleed it would inflict the bleed um, because it doesn't negate you know it's not iframes but it does allow you to plow through basically and that's just a really cool helm splitter sequence that I just really like alright let's go to the next one All right, and this is your special sheath R2 move. Um, it does normally consume a bar, but if you eat damage right here, while you do it, you don't actually lose the meter. I do misspeak uh, later in the video, and I say you gain a meter because we were talking about other things that gain meters. But at the bottom line is, you do this as a counter hit, and you don't lose your meter. And everyone's favorite longsword move, the Helm Breaker, which I call the Helm Splitter. It's just the most beautiful straight from the anime's 
samurai genre move you can have in a video game. <laughs> it's just perfect. Uh, the thing to know about this move to make you an expert at it is you can control the direction of the move and you can control uh, when you come down with the sword attack. Uh, to control the direction of the move, I'll do another one in this sequence right here, you just aim the camera where you want to go. So here it comes right here. I want to go back to his head, so I just aim the camera over there, and to bring it down, you hit triangle again. Anytime you hit triangle, you're going to instantly bring the helm splitter down whenever you press the triangle button. Not on the upswing, of course, but once you get a certain height, you don't have to go max height. Uh, I'm going to show it here again. He's going to do the helm splitter, and I'm going away from his head, so I position the camera back over towards his head, and then hit triangle boom. See how that triangle came later in the animation? And we're going to show one more here in a second. So you can kind of control when you come down and where you go with the helm splitter. Um, just try to focus on putting the camera, see he's over there, I turn back the around to face the camera, I hit triangle, come down. And that's what you want to know about the helm splitter. Uh, you can control it and you can control when you come down. All right, so let's find out how to become expert longsword users. Uh, this first segment, I'm just going to go over the basics of the longsword, but I'm not going to go too much into it because everybody knows how to use the longsword, or you can go do the basic tutorial, or you can just play around and see what these buttons do. Uh, we're going to use our friend Cart Bear Pig over here. Everybody look at him and adore him in his majesty. He's wonderful. Uh, and all right, let's uh, go over the basics. So you got your longsword. It's a counter hit style meter based weapon. In your top left under your sharpness meter, you see that meter that builds up with every hit. Uh, and it has um, three additional charges that you can do from its base level. And we'll go, we'll go over that. Uh, but first things first, what are his attacks? So you have his standard triangle attack and this can be done from a sheet attack. We'll go into more about that before uh, again uh, and then we have his circle attack which is a regular stab his triangle does perform a combo uh, for some reason it's always the two overhead for uh, hits first when you do it initially but after that it just does one overhead hit and then goes into the combo um, I don't really use this very often most players don't but it's just a good way in base game especially when you don't have too many options to build meter uh, and you don't want to don't want to do something that puts you in a, a disadvantageous situation or something that you can be hurt by trying to be too aggressive with your attacks it's a good way just to start building some meter okay your stab on your circle uh, is just a regular one hit thing uh, it only serves really one purpose well two maybe if you want to stab like a paratoad or something like that you don't want to use weapons that might not or attacks that might not hit exactly where you want to so you just kind of run up and stab them you know but the main use is to set up the foresight slash um, you know, Foresight Slash is a counter hit move that you have to do when the, the enemy is counter hitting you to get the full effects. Uh, so sometimes you see them charging them up and attack, so you just want to do a quick one so you can go immediately into your Foresight Slash. And uh, we'll talk about that as well. So those are your two basic attacks. Both of these build up meter. See that meter getting raised? It gets full, and then... What you want to do when your meter is full is the next attack, and this is your spirit gauge combo, is by used by press uh, used to do by pressing R2. Um, you don't have to do the full combo, but really the only point of doing this combo is it eats up your meter, but this very last hit charges your meter to the next level. You see how I just got that white gauge? Okay, so now your meter is at the next level. And let's just uh, go ahead and show the meter system you fill up your bar again with attacks and then you do there are other moves that do this hit um, so you do that hit again and now it goes into this orangish looking coat on your meter you build up your meter again each level of this meter is increasing your damage to you finally get to your red meter boom and now you have maximum damage so in every fight, what you're trying to do as a longsword main is get to the red meter as quickly as, as humanly possible. And then once you're in your red meter, you do whatever you want to keep your damage high. Uh, a lot of people go straight off into the biggest, baddest moves, but um, there's reasons why you want to wait off on that sometimes. Uh, 
but we'll go into that too. So that's your spirit gauge combo. It eats spirit meter, but gives you a charge. Okay, um, so now let's talk about his other neutral based moves. I like to call these the cancelable moves. Uh, these are moves that you don't necessarily have to do after other moves, but they're best used after other moves. Uh, first of all, let's just talk about your foresight slash again. So you're doing any move at any time in any combo, you hit R2 and circle, and you cancel it out to this back swing move with that hit. Uh, I can't show it in the um, uh, practice arena here, but if you take damage on that back swing, that's the whole point. When you're doing that back swing is when you want to be getting hit by the monster. Then you can do a follow-up move, which looks exactly the same as the end of your spirit gauge combo. And it also increases your meter by one level. So that's the quick way to fill your meter. Uh, it does have to be a counter attack, of course. Um, there, you have other cancelable moves. You have the Fade Slash, which is Triangle and Circle. And this one has a follow-up, too, with R2. That does not give you meter, but it does go into the Spirit Roundhouse combo R2. So it is a little bit better way to do your R2 combo. R2 combo you don't really want to do just in the neutral. You want to do this when they're you're punishing like a big breath attack. So they're doing like a long animation so you know you can get the whole thing. Or they're down on the ground and you want to charge your meter on their head before you want to do a helm splitter. That's the times you want to do that. Um, other times what you want to do is maybe use your... What I like to do is triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle, circle. So this combo comes out just as fast as, let's say, your, your triangle, triangle, triangle combo. It comes out just as fast as your R2 combo. But the thing about this is, A, it doesn't take any meter. B, you can just do triangle and circle over and over again infinitely. And C, there's no commitment. At any point, you can stop. At any point, you can foresight slash. That's how I got good with my foresight slash, is I basically, instead of doing many other things when I'm just facing up the monster, is I would just hit them with triangle, circle, triangle, circle, until they hit me, and then I would learn to time my foresight slash. So, you know, I'm always getting damage. These are good damaging hits. You're just not committing to anything, but you're still not losing anything because you can still get your meter game. You know what I mean? Um, okay, other cancelable moves. Uh, Fate Slash we were just talking about. So Fate Slash you can do, just like with your weapon out. I don't think you can do it from a sheet, though. But you can do it with just your weapon out. Triangle Circle. So when you do it this way, it just bounces you back, and of course you still have that follow-up. But the, its best use is actually in a combo. So when you're doing a combo, you can do your face side slash and input left or right and actually change your direction. And this is good for when a monster is doing a light attack or you don't know if he's going to attack. So you don't want to commit to something too severe. So you just do one, two, face side slash to the right, follow up with your R2, go into your spirit combo. Now you're kind of at their side. So whatever attack they were doing, you know, sometimes they just have linear aspects to it. Sometimes they have AOE aspects to it. But it's a way to get in there, still work on building your meter, but not committing to something too dangerous again, you know? Pop me to the side of your legs or something like that, and then you can carry on your offense after that. And your last one, of course, the cancelable moves, is your big bad Helm Splitter. Everybody's favorite move does mega damage. And uh, it's like seven or eight hits, and each hit, like right there, did 202. So it, it does huge, huge damage. That's your big damage move for your longsword, you know? Uh, it can be done raw. You don't have to... Uh, do an attack first. Oh, I just did an attack first there. Let me build up that meter again. Oh, wrong thing. So you can do your Helm Splitter after an attack as a cancelable move. Or, of course, let's say you're facing Fatalis and he does his big breath attack. Oh, your weapon doesn't have to be drawn. You can just go do it raw. All right. That's another cancelable move. That's his big damaging move. And then the last cancelable move is your spe special sheath in Iceborne. You don't have this in base game. Um, so you're going to have to work... This tutorial, you're going to have to work around anything I mentioned that in. Um, you can, a lot of times, substitute the special sheath for the Fade Slash in a lot of the combos I'm going to talk about later. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and this is done by, after doing any attack, you hold R2 
and press X and you go into a sheath. Within that, you have two moves you can do. Triangle does your um, double hit move right there. And R2 does this big ultimate attack Kenshin looking to hit things that does pretty much the most single hit damage you can do in the game. But your total best overall attack move for damage, of course, is the Helm Breaker. And I know I keep calling it the Helm Splitter, but I just like calling it that. Um, but that does the most damage because of the number of hits, basically. All right, let's talk about his uh, longsword user's aerial hits. Where's my ledge? There it is. So once you jump off a ledge or have your trusty glider mantle, these are all the hits that inflict, uh, you know, the, the mount ability. You got to have aerial hits. So he has his basic triangle. All right. That's just one hit. Um, now, when your meter is in its first stage, um, you can you, can, you basically have R2 hits from the aerial, uh, and it is dependent on your meter. So when your meter is at your base level, you can only do one hit with your R2 combo. Right now, it's at the second level, I believe, so you can do two hits with it. No, no, that's at the base level. Okay, so that was the one hit. Now, let's see. Now we're going to go get our level two meter. And this aerial attack, I'm sorry I'm taking a little bit of time with this aerial attack, but this is very important. Uh, it's one of his best attacks in the game for a longsword user. So at level 2, you can do a two-hit version of it, and both of those uh, hits do infi inflict mount hits. Oh, And now let's charge up our meter, meter to max. Oh, we let it go all the way. All right, when you have max meter in the red, this aerial attack is now three hits. And the reason this is the one of the best attacks you have in the game is those three hits, um, or the one or the two if you're doing it at other levels, do huge damage. They count as mount hits, so you get three mount hits for one in this, and this pretty much, if you're anywhere close to getting a mount, you're going to get it with that move, especially if you're coming off your raider mount. And it also inflicts stun if you're wearing the Frostfang Helm, because you, as long as your weapon is sheathed before you jump up and do this, this does count as a sheathed attack. So this will inflict stun from a punishing draw. Uh, and because it does stun, aerial, and just massive damage, when you do that hit on a monster, especially if you get their head, uh, you're making the likelihood of three separate types of knockdowns possible concurrently. You know what I mean? So uh, the head damage, just they, they get a certain amount of head damage and they're going to have a topple over. They get a certain amount of damage to either their front or back legs, legs they're going to topple over. Uh, if you inflict enough stun on their head, um, you can inflict the stun on their body anywhere, but when it comes time to actually get the stun knockout, it has to be a head hit. Um, so you're doing that with that attack again. And if you're hitting them anywhere, you're hitting uh, increasing your mount meter, so you're building up the chance that you're going to mount. So those are three different types of knockdowns you're building up with that one move and it's quite wonderful um, what else does we have okay we got our grappling attacks of course um, so you have your triangle this is your soften attack and this is how you get your little you know softened on the hide to get your affinity up from weakness exploit uh, also this attack is also a sheathed attack that does inflict stun with the frostfang helm as long as your weapon is sheathed before you do it this will count for stun damage as well. I don't know if each individual hit does. It might, it might actually, but I know you get at least one stun damaging hit from doing that. Um, and then the other thing you can do, especially if you have the glider mantle, uh, well, it's not active right now, so we'll come back to that in just a second. All right, what else uh, does a longsword user, can they do? They can do sliding attacks. So when you're in a slide, you have two options. You can hit triangle, does this like launcher, and then from that launcher, you can do your aerial attack. Oh, and by the way, when you do your aerial attack after you land like that, just keep hitting R2, and you'll go straight into your spirit gauge combo. Um, so it's a quick way to build meter that way once you've committed to an aerial attack. So that's one of the reasons I like the glider mantle, so I can set up all these aerial attacks to do these wonderful things. And when I land, I'm I'm trying to fill up my meter. You know, let's do that one more time. Launcher. And three hits, especially when your meter's full, and you go on with your gauge. 
okay? Um, that launching hit also counts as a mount attack. So if you get him with the launcher and the three hits, that's four aerial hits you just did. And if you're sheathed, you got stun. Oh, didn't do it. If you're sheathed, you got stun and aerial mount hits from all four of those hits. So it's a very nice one. Uh, and then his last aerial attack, uh, or slide attack, is this R2 from a slide. First of all, it looks amazing, and it's basically a foresight slash. I can't really show it to you unless I can actually reach him with the slide. Let's see. No. Oh, yeah, there he goes. I did the hit. It did not have to hit him. Wow, I thought it had to hit him. So that's, that's what you do. It's basically another way to gain meter. You do the slide. You do R2. Basically, all your R2 options are meter in using, but... Um, also increasing the gauge skills, you know, I uh, didn't re replicate it there, but that second hit is what's going to get you the meter on that. So those are his sliding attacks. Uh, let's go back into one more point I was making about his clutch claw attack. So the clutch claw attack with the glider mantle, you don't always have to just do the triangle. You can always jump off with X and then go into your aerial stuff. Um, so this is a very, very good way to control when you get mounts, um, because I like to go for mounts on the monster once they are enraged, so I can negate the time they're enraged by being on them and kicking their ass and, and getting free head damage once I knock them down. Um, so that's how I do it with the glider mantle. You're going to clutch claw them, you're going to jump off, and then, you know, go into your spirit gauge combo, all that stuff. All right, so that's pretty much everything you want to know about moves that you can do uh, as, as a basic. So now, the big thing about becoming an expert with the longsword is learning how to use all these moves together and how to make combos or just certain techniques that are best followed up by other ones. And that's going to be the next section. So we went over the basics, and let's talk about putting this all together into technique. Okay, so if we want to learn some advanced techniques and learn how to use all these moves, um, the first thing we have to understand is, other than the move, um, a lot of these moves have certain qualities that we want to know and know how to use them. Um, first off, a lot of weapons have use for pods that you can do mid-combo or things like that. It, there is no such thing for the longsword. You can't use it in the middle of a combo. Um, pods are just used as pods, you know? Um, okay, so we want to know what are all the special qualities of our moves. So let's start off with the big ones. You know, you have your Foresight Slash. Once you take that hit and do the follow-up hit, the Spirit Roundhouse, after that, you get your meter gain. Uh, wonderful. And it's also wonderful because it negates any damage you take during that backswing. Even the biggest, baddest attack, Nergagante's ultimate attack, uh, where he jumps down, power bombs the ground, shoots off his poison spikes, uh, Valkana's uh, big circle breath attack, uh, Namiel's uh, giant electric attack, um, anything that's not like a wipeout attack like Eschaton Judgment from Alatrion or whatever. Um, you will negate its damage during that backswing, you know? So it has iframes, it has invulnerability, and it gains your meter. So those are the attributes you want to know about your foresight slash. All right, um, let's talk about your, your fade slash. The only real attribute is that sideways momentum you get mid-combo from using it. Other than that, it's just a good chunky damage follow-up attack that goes into your spirit gauge that lets you build meter, you know? Um... Special sheath. So you have two attacks in your special sheath. Actually, I can't show it right now. Uh, let's go ahead and use some of this meter and watch my meter. See, I'm going to do the specialist sheath, and my meter is still going to go up even though I'm not attacking. That's the special quality about the special sheath triangle attack. Um, this is why it's good to use. Um, especially early or anytime you need to build meter so you can do it with an attack without actually having to commit to um, doing follow-up attacks after to gain more meter, you know? Um, so that's why after base game, you never really use this triangle, triangle, triangle combo. Its main service is to, is to build meter, uh, but now, let me go ahead and use this meter. Now with this special sheet, triangle attack, you're gaining meter. So when you want to gain meter, you just do triangle into special sheath. And then you can go into anything after that that, that builds um, 
your meter with the spirit roundhouse uh, but this is what I like to do this is my standard go-to build meter approach into special sheet now at this point I can alter my plan in case the monster does anything I do a fade slash into the follow-up and then I go into uh, the spirit roundhouse combo the reason and I didn't do it there so I'll do a better version of it I do this uh, fade slash because I can directionally input um, I didn't do it again <laughs> well maybe I can't do it after a special sheet but sometimes I just do it like this directional input to get away from something and then I can carry on because I don't really care if those other hits in the combo hit I just care if my spirit roundhouse hits and it has such a huge hitbox for its sweeping attack that it's gonna hit you know um, so that's the way I like to build meter uh, when I'm on the ground and I also like to build meter like this I use especially once I have the red meter or, or sorry the second level I do my aerial attacks and when I land, I do my, my combo. And then I go into my special sheath. And then I go into my fade slash. And then I go into another spirit gauge brown house because you'll have built up enough meter. This is what I call my never ending combo. You can do this for meter gain. You can do this for when they're on the head and you don't have red meter yet. So you don't want to launch a helm splitter. You just want to build more meter. This is the exact combo you, you do, guys. Overhead into special sheath into fade slash, into follow up fade slash, into spirit roundhouse combo, and then you rinse and repeat after that combo. You just go back into your, um... see I'm nowhere near them, but as long as that hit hits, you go. So that's why your good long sword players are always going into special sheath. Um, there's something good you can do always with it. And that's just the meter build version of it. That's not even the best things you can do in special sheet. I mean, um, his best thing to do in special sheet is his R2 button, but this is another, this is like a, a foresight slash type timing move. You want to make sure they're hitting you when that happens. So you will get this hit. See, it's eating my meter when I do it. Every, it, It's one full bar every time I do it. However, if I get the same counter hit like I do on the foresight slash then I'm going to gain a, a hit you're going to get counter hit damage you're going to get stun damage and you're just going to do a bunch of bunch of wonderful wonderful stuff all right so um that's how to build meter that's how to combo consecutively um I mentioned before how I set up the foresight slash triangle circle triangle circle this is your best way to approach a monster without any commitment you can do anything out of this you can roll out of the way uh, you can decide to fade slash you can decide to foresight slash you can decide to helm splitter you can do anything you want after those moves and that's the key thing is to know what moves follow what moves um, now, I was talking earlier about your cancelable moves. So you have your Foresight Slash, you have your Helm Splitter, and you have your Fade Slash. Um, and they, they kind of have an order of importance. I'll show you why. So you can do, let's say, let me get my meter back on the... What am I doing? Let me get my meter back on this combo. I don't need it, but I just want to make a point. So I'm doing my Fade Slash into this get in my combos now I got full meter and I do something else into my fade slash but look he attacked me you can cancel that into your foresight slash so your fade slash you can cancel out into with a foresight slash for defensive purposes or for offensive purposes you can go straight into your helm splitter oops missed it so boom, boom, he did something, let me get out of the way, let me helm splitter, you know? So you got two options. It's it's basically these um, cancelable moves are now your option selects if you're a fighting game fan. You know, you're doing something, you go into a can, what do I want to do? Meter, what do I want to do? Get out of the way. What do I want to do after I get out of the way? I want to get more meter, okay? I got my meter, now I'm at full, let's get the meter charged, what do I want to do? I want a Helm Splitter. So your cancel move moves are the, the option selects of this game, you know? Um, and just so you know, you can always do cancel one cancelable move into another cancelable move, move into the third cancelable move. 
cancelable move. You can't cancel out of a, a long sword or a, a helm splitter. That's a you would never want to, anyways. Let me just build up the meter while I make this point. You would never want to cancel a helm splitter when you're doing it. You want to do it because you want to get the damage, you know. Um, so you generally the order of your cancelable moves. If you're going to cancelable, a cancelable is going to be your. We'll do it one more time. Fade slash. Need to eat an attack. Go for a helm splitter, and you don't even have to do this swing. You can do. straight into the helm splitter. Uh, that's another great thing about the uh, foresight slash is once when you do a foresight slash on the backswing before you do the the move you get the hit from if you do get the counter hit you would immediately get full meter so I can't show it to you so you can always have the option of foresight slash absorb the hit go straight into the helm splitter helm splitter this is a really really awesome thing to do when the monster gets enraged and they do that roar you can foresight slash the roar and go straight into the helm splitter so keep that in mind because anytime the monster becomes a rage and they let out a roar any monster after the roar they they are susceptible to get hit by something so if they do their roar foresight slash helm splitter you're you're guaranteed that helm splitter every single time every single time uh, okay, so we talked about fishing out um, foresight slashes. Get good at, with it here. Now you don't just have to do that. Of course, you can do any combo, anything you can do. That's not the helm splitter. You can cancel it out with the form foresight slash. You can go into your well, not the third hit of the R2 combo either. The third hit of the R2 combo makes you you're you're now committed to doing that three hit sequence right there so there's nothing you can do to cancel out that but you can cancel out immediately after immediately before but just never let's try it nope just not during that three hit sequence all right all right we talked about that we talked about uh the importance of oh okay one more point i want to make and i, I think that's going to be all for the video really is uh know which attacks count as sheathed attacks i've been mentioning that throughout the video um, and I like to wear my um, Frostfang helm so if you have any kind of stun ability for any weapon user really but know which attacks are sheathed attacks so sheathed attacks are just attacks when your sword is already in the sheath and you know if punishing draw says draw attack so you might just think it's your draw triangle and your draw R2 because they're draw attacks, you know, but it counts for any sheathed attack. So anytime your weapon's up, this triangle, that's a sheathed attack. This R2 is a sheathed attack from your spirit gauge combo. And then anything you can do, this is a sheathed attack because my weapon was in. My aerial stuff are now sheathed attacks. Any one of them, triangle or, uh, and your sliding attacks. Your sliding attacks are all sheathed attacks. These are all attacks that now inflict stun. Okay? Oops. You're, I was going to do the launching one. So all your sliding attacks from sheath, including the R2 one we talked about, they're now all stun bearing. And um, the other point I wanted to make is when you're wanting to inflict stun, if you have that capability, um, the best thing to do is just to cycle this little mini combo with your weapon is uh, in its sheath. It's to just go into a triangle, into a special sheath triangle, and just really just keep doing that. Because if you want to just inflict stun while they're on the ground, um, that's the that's the quickest thing. All three of those hits are going to inflict stun. And if you have the setup that I have in my video, that's you know 30 to 39 stun damage per hit. Uh, that's pretty significant when you want to get those stuns. Um, all right, I think that's about all. I mean, is there any other thing we talked about? The foresight slash. We talked about you know your special R2s, your aerials. Yeah, that's about it. Um, any other tips or tricks you long term sword mains that are watching this would like to put out there, uh, please feel free to put those in the comments. And let me just go ahead and work on an intro and outro, and we'll be done with this shebang. Thank you for sitting through this 
40-ish minute video with me. I uh, just want to say uh, thank you to all my commenters, subscribers, viewers. Keep all that stuff coming. I love these conversations. Please add any tips, anything you would like to recommend uh, for any longsword users that might be watching this. And as my normal, I'd like to give a shout out to all the lady gamers out there. Uh, please remember to be civil to one another online. It's a very important aspect of life is just knowing how to deal with people in social social situations and uh, a big one of this is how we treat people online so let's be civil let's be kind if you like what you saw today please give me a like a subscription and that's about all for today see ya